All right. Well, thank you for joining us. We are really happy to have you here for our free webinar on showing up whole. And really what we want to talk about today is the power of connecting your brand experience for maximum impact. There's a lot of research, as we all know, that conditions have changed, consumers have changed, market drivers and stresses have changed. And so we really want to um, just share some of the latest research and also some of our experience and case studies on how connecting that brand across all of your touch points really increases the power. And how, what do you do to go about being an extraordinary brand? So we're going to jump right in. Let's see, is it not working? Let's see, here's that, not working. Okay, hold on. I don't know, oh, there it is, okay. Sorry about that. So the question you've got to start with is how does your brand show up? And it may have a lot of different answers, but one of the interesting statistics from a recent 2023 predictions by Forrester is that 80% of the companies that they surveyed globally and domestically said that customer experience was not part of their brand. This is an important factor because in 2023, after the stresses that we've had of the pandemic and now the recession, companies really need to dial in and focus in on their existing customers, building that trust, establishing and increasing more loyalty. And the way to do that is by addressing the customer experience. The spoiler alert here is that marketing and brand has to be aligned to the customer experience if you are going to succeed for the long term. So, so how do you get better engagement? How do you drive more loyalty or retention? How do you get your marketing to work better? How do you become extraordinary as a brand? I want to stop and just say, you know, the definition of ordinary is to be common or expected without distinction or nothing that really sets it apart. So the first way that you are going to be able to build a brand that establishes more loyalty, more retention, that has more impact to drive the bottom line is through being differentiated. So anymore, you're not going to be able to compete on the topics, on the basis of price and product alone. When you look at like State Farm here, how many insurers are there? Are they really that different in price? Unless you're Walmart that's coming in as cheap as possible or Porsche who is way higher price, but their product is completely different it's going to be harder and harder to differentiate your business on the basis of product and price. And it's predicted by national research bodies all over from McKinsey to Forrester, Medallia, others, that the point of differentiation for customers anymore is going to be the customer experience. And with that, there needs to be a brand that wraps around that customer experience around that in-person or digital experience for your customer. The brand and the promise and the story needs to consistently show up to be able to reflect who you are as an organization, what your brand stands for, and to begin to build those laying the foundation of trust for your consumer. Now these brands I have on the screen here, this Jake from State Farm, everywhere they set up, whether it is broadcast TV commercial, digital, 
whether it is a mailer or whatever, any touch point that they have is very consistent. It's got the same story, the same message, the same look and feel. And I think that there's something really powerful. State Farm isn't every time trying to sell you on one of their new services or features. They are sticking to the one line, which is personal price point guarantee. So you know, when you contact them, they are going to evaluate your insurance and provide you a personal quote. They aren't trying to say, oh, and we have this, and we have that. Oh, we do boats. Oh, we do this, we do that. They are sticking to one foundational message that is the same across every platform. And it's powerful. Look at this post here as a more than a million views of this video about insurance on social media. Now, whether you like Taylor Swift or not, she is a marketing genius. She has established her brand in a way that is consistent. And this photo in the middle is one of her VIP boxes. So people who buy into the VIP package for her concert tours and her recent Eras tour launch broke the internet practically. So many people wanted in to get those tickets. But these VIP boxes come and they opened up and the, the pop-up set that opened inside the box matched the set that's on the stage the day of the concert. There's a recorded voice message. There's music inside. There is an entire experience that is delivered to the home of the people who purchased into this VIP experience. And that perfectly aligns with the experience they will have in person at her concerts. It's a brilliant tactic and it drives higher volume sales. It drives more people wanting to buy that VIP level ticket in order to experience this special thing that she's created. And then the likes of M&Ms, they are the same everywhere, every platform, on social, on TV, on digital ads, on their packaging, in their in-store displays. There is a consistency that differentiates them apart from all the other candies. The next thing that you really have to focus in on to have your brand elevate and stand above is to be real. This ad from Dove campaign is a little bit older, but what a beautiful connection to humans. Dove got it right because they decided to get on board with all the millions of women across the world that are tired of being compared to the standard of a Photoshop image of the prepubescent model who's been photoshopped on top of that. And so they came with this campaign that could connect to, that could connect to consumers on what they think and what they feel. And so it's important in your marketing, whether you are a healthcare entity or a health or an insurance or a consumer product good, that your story, your history, whether it's the nostalgia of it, your commitment, your passion, your core values, what is it that you stand for? More and more, in fact, like 70% of Gen Z and millennials want to do business with brands that align to their personal meaning, that align to something that's valuable to them. Think of the Patagonias who have built this community and relationship through their content, which came from their story, their story and their commitment to environmental goodness, to protecting the earth, to saving the ecosystems. They, their story and their content online and in advertising is what built that community. So relationships with brands are built on common interest. They're built on empathy, on meaningful value, and on shared, shared meaning. It's built on trust and it's built on authenticity. So it's important in your branding and marketing that your 
stuff isn't just pointing out services, but that it's connecting in a way that engages what your customer needs and wants. We have one client that we helped with, they are kind of a medical service and they were talking about things super medicalized, but all of their clients who are moms mostly and young children who have a health issue were super emotional and just heartbroken over the loss of the ideal that they wanted as a family. So when you can connect with, we want to help make that a reality, there was a whole entire different response to marketing. The community more than doubled and their revenue increased by 50% year over year. The power of connection is essential in marketing. You need to also be obsessed. What do your customers need? What do they want? How are you responding to that feedback? Now, there's a, there's a little bit of a warning here about a short-term versus a long-term focus. In 2023, it's estimated that more and more companies are going to, on the tail of the pandemic and going into the recession, they're going to change their focus into short-term revenue wins. That's okay. We all need money to run our business. But if it's done in absence or neglect of the long-term view to your brand strength and the customer experience, you will lose in the long run. It's in fact those companies that can leverage and manage the short-term revenue tick ups and the long-term sustained brand play to continue that brand trash, continue that relationship, continue to build that authenticity. Those are the organizations that have demonstrated year after year after year to be the most profitable for the long-term. So it's important that in your obsession around customers and really customer obsession means that you're putting humans in the middle of your decision-making. What's best for them? And I can guarantee you, it has been demonstrated in research study after research study that the organizations that do that the best are the most profitable domestically, globally, in every sector, from banking to cell phones to products to healthcare. Those are the most profitable businesses are the ones that can be obsessed about the humans in the middle and obsessed about making sure that their customers and what's best for them is the impetus for their decisions, not the other way around. So this photo here is from Magic Castle Hotel in near LA. And you can see from the photo, it's not super ritzy and amazing. This is their pool deck. It looks more along the lines of a two-star hotel. But this sign, Popsicle Hotline, is a demonstration of them meeting a need that the customers didn't even necessarily ask for, but in a way that was surprised and was like, oh, this is so cool. And they have people coming here just to stay here because of the Popsicle Hotline. It has earned them media attention across lots of uh, media outlets on TV, in articles. They have become an example of customer experience in this two to maybe three star hotel near LA and they're nailing it because they went out of their way to say, you know what, it's hot here at the pool deck. Let's do a popsicle hotline. And they have these little touch points throughout the hotel that have generated enough interest that it has grown their revenue. So the next piece is to really be relevant. How do you know if you're relevant? Well, first of all, it requires listening. And I mean, really listening. There's a new study for 2020, the end of 2022 that said 70% of consumers feel like businesses don't really listen to them. That's not a great stat for businesses. If you want to be customer centric, you need to really listen. And you know what? That doesn't mean more surveys. 
you know, I had a CEO at a huge Fortune 40 company that told me, we won't acknowledge any feedback except survey feedback. Well, there's a risk there. In most companies, maybe 20% or less of your feedback is structured like that through a formalized survey or whatever. And most of your feedback is unstructured feedback. And in the light of the customer needs and wants, that unstructured feedback is actually better and more real because it's a customer using their own words. So whether you are looking at social media or Reddit channels or online reviews or listening to the recorded calls of your call center and doing a natural language processing to pull out the themes from the actual words of the customer, those are going to provide you immensely valuable feedback to how and what your customer needs. And I'll leave you with this question. Are the actions and the solutions and changes you are pursuing something that the customer even wants? I could tell you as an agency, there are so many times when we have clients who come to us and they want this fix or this fix or this initiative. And we're like, okay, so what is the impetus for this decision or this action? Well, we just thought it would be a good idea. Well, I'm sure it's a good idea, but what if it isn't what will really make the customer happy? Then you've just wasted time, money, and resources that are really hard to get in this day and age. So make sure that your choices are data-informed, they're informed on the voice of the customer, the voice of your employee, your frontline staff that are engaging with them all the time, make sure that you know what they really want. Be present. So this point is really important, especially right now in this time of our country, of our globe, where recession is coming in. The COVID has been a hard hit to so many. And now we're going right into recession and there's geopolitical unrest. There's racial upheaval, there is political chaos going on everywhere in our globe, especially in our country too, in the US. So it's important in these times that you don't just hunker down. You don't just hunker in and try to wait it out. Procter & Gamble, who's seen here during the Great Depression, their primary product at the time was soap, like body soap. And they figured people still are gonna need soap. Yes, it is the recession. It's the Great Depression. It is a very hard time financially for people, but people need soap. So let's make sure when they go get soap, they're gonna pick ours. So they did what seemed intellectually contrary to what they should do, they increased their investment. And they began advertising their soap. And they started a daily radio show called The Housewives, the Housewives Show or something. Every single day during the day, talking about their soap products on the radio to the women who were at home. At the time, that was the common standard. And that ultimately became known as the soap operas. So Procter & Gamble is the first soap opera of, of our age. And they increased in market share. They came out of the Great Depression stronger and better than they went into it. The lesson here, it's reproduced in the 08-09 recession in the United States. The companies that didn't retract, but instead use the opportunity to stand up and show up, be consistent, to be resilient. Those are the ones that came out of that 0809 recession stronger and are stronger still to this day. So the lesson here is to be consistent, be resilient, be present, show up and show up consistently. 
It's in these times that consumers are going to make their brand choices and their decisions based on trust. And they're going to trust the ones who are showing up, who are there. Those are, the trust is going to be the foundation of loyalty and loyalty will be the foundation of more money spent. So it's interesting that, you know, again, through COVID, the companies that pivoted, that stayed the course are the ones that survived. The ones that shut down or retracted or whatever eventually ended up having to close, many of them. And so it's important that in your planning and in marketing that you don't go hide, but that you remain present to whatever degree you can. And the last point here is to be empowering. Trader Joe's, if you have one in your area or have ever been, is amazing. It's a fun, casual, lighthearted kind of shopping experience. They've reduced the number of products available, but they have created a culture where their employees are empowered to do whatever it takes for the customer, including opening a package and letting them taste one if they want to before buying the package of cookies or whatever. So it's important that in your organization that you have your staff or your representatives empowered to take care of the customer. And, you know, at one, at one organization where I was over the call center, we had really low employee engagement, like in the 40%. And we had pretty bad <laughs> customer satisfaction as well not even quite 50%. And when we dissected and looked into that, the thing that the customer wanted was the same thing that the employees needed, which was the customer wanted to not get transferred and transferred and transferred to get help. And the employee wanted to be able to resolve the issue for those clients right away, rather than having this much authority and then having to hand it off to somebody else. It basically meant that the call center staff was the front line getting their back end handed to them every time the client called because they were powerless to solve the issue. So when we addressed that and gave the employees expanded power where we identified some process things that could help, where we created some communication and information for all of the internal staff and where we redid some training that really showed what our brand promises were, what our priorities were, what the progress was across the organization, then we were able to empower those, those call agents to take better care and answer the client's questions faster. Guess what? In two years time, both of those satisfaction scores increased to over 80% more than 36% increase in two years, which is almost unheard of. But the difference was empowering the staff to take care of the client made the staff happier, it made the client happier, and it made the entire experience better for everybody. There was one um, survey that said, you know, a lot of times we'll go jump right into operational efficiency to try to fix a CX issue. And there's one study that was just done that said, customers are two times as likely to report satisfaction if they just get an empathetic response or kind help. That, that matters to them on a phone call more than a short wait time. But how many of us in our business get hyper, about the short wait time and focus all our time there. And then we haven't created this atmosphere where our staff are supported, are developed, are surrounded and empowered to be empathetic and to be kind and to take care of those needs. So we talked about in our materials for this webinar that we would address, what are some of the top mistakes that we see businesses do in terms of, um, checking my time here, in terms of 
not getting their brand right. So these are the four main things that we see. One is myopic decisions. That's nearsighted is myopathy. So myopic decisions are really when you're just making short-term decisions. It's only about the money or the next quarterly report or this one survey thing, rather than seeing the long-term play of all the actions that add up to a strong brand and a strong customer experience. It's important you, if you need to do short-term solutions and everybody will, that they aren't done to the detriment of your long-term brand play, which is consistent, it is loyal, it is trustworthy, it is the same across channels. The second biggest mistake is that a lot sometimes decisions get made on assumptions versus on research. Get the data. We had a big client come to us recently that has this huge fix they need. They've hired us to do it. And when we've asked about what data they have, there's nothing. So we're stopping the progress and going to collect some data. Otherwise your fix is in a vacuum and it may or may not be what is needed. It may not be the highest priority for your organization right now. So make sure that you have done some research that you've looked into the things that the customer wants, that your staff need, the market drivers, what are the trends, whatever. Make sure that your actions are based on data. Number three, waiting for the calm. Well, if you're waiting for the calm, for things to settle down before you move forward, you are going to be stuck there for a long time because there's always going to be another Omicron variant. There's going to be financial issue. There's going to be an election every four years that dusts up the political chaos of our country. There's going to be changes in consumer behaviors. As some generations leave the workforce and the shopping primary audience and others rise up, the needs are different. Our world is changing every single day. So if you're waiting to really capture, you're going to lose. And then the last thing is just doing the same old thing. You know, I worked for a hospital in a rural area that had been in this town for 85 years, literally, giving free care nonetheless for 85 years. And when we would be out in the community at community parks or kids day or whatever, people would be like, what? You guys are in town here? I had no idea. They had no idea. They just had done the same thing the same way for 80 years. And it, even the people in this relatively small rural community didn't even know they were there. And you know what? They were right between the two main hospitals of the town, three hospitals in a row on the same street. They didn't even know they were there. So it's important that you don't just assume what you have works. And on the flip side, don't move on too fast. The one example is progressive with Flo. She has been around for more than a decade, probably getting close to two decades and their marketing team was ready to scrap it. But they listened, assumption versus research. They listened to the data, to what the consumer wanted, they listened to how it was resonating and they found out people love flow. She's still out there. They have swag, little bobbleheads and stickers and shirts and all the things. People love that character in their marketing. So they are keeping with that. They're adding in some other things, but it's important that you evaluate your tactics and make sure that they are effective. All right. So to get a truly aligned message, and really what we're talking about on this whole webinar is, yes, you need to have all of these other things. You need to be relevant, all of that. But then the thing I see often is that we don't align that message, or we're afraid to go too narrow, 
So we have a different look, feel, voice, tone, everything on every different channel. When you are especially in smaller areas or um, have really fierce competition or something like that hospital in the middle of the other two, it's really important that you align your message. You know, don't operate your marketing in a silo, first of all. And the piece that often gets missed, align your paid and organic. Align your media and PR. Do less with your media instead of trying to, like we said at the beginning, sell a service or product on every single hit. Have one main theme across all the channels. It could be campaign, like by season, whatever, but be sure that you align your internal audience to it. That is a piece that often gets missed. Don't overlook your most loyal advocates and supporters by skipping your internal audience. When your internal audience, your coworkers, your workforce don't know what you're promoting, then they can't help spread the news. They can't help be social advocates for you. They, they end up just blithely unaware. And that is a powerful miss for you. I'll give you one example. We, um, at, I worked for Shriners Hospitals for a while and the messaging had always been so complicated, so complicated, orthopedic with an AE in it. And, you know, talking about osteogenesis imperfecta and all the things, it didn't resonate. People didn't know. And what we discovered was that was too complicated. And every ad had this much text in it and a little logo and all the white space filled and whatever. And we decided to turn on a dime and try something different. We found out 85 years we'd been in that community and people didn't even know. So we did a campaign called Face Off and we took the, just the faces of the kids. We didn't want to show their amputated leg or their hip or whatever. We didn't want to show the physical condition. We wanted to show the human. So we recorded broadcast spots and we had print ads. We had flyers. We had bus billboards. Every single paid organic and media opportunity that we had was aligned to this. We had five or six patients. And it was the first time we'd ever been able to purchase a big campaign. The total cost was $30,000, which was enormous for that budget. But I'll tell you what, instead of saying osteogenesis imperfecta, we just said bone, you know, childhood bone and joint injuries. That makes a lot more sense to people than hip dysplasia or osteogenesis imperfecta or, you know, all the technical names for the various things that come up. So instead, we said expert bone care, expert fracture care, expert joint care. We just made it super simple. We are pediatric bone and joint experts, period. We made that our message for the internal audience to help get them aligned. We made that message for the external audience. We had so much PR in that quarter. It was mind bending. And guess what? We also aligned to the provider relations and the provider outreach, pediatric bone and joint experts. You know what? We improved our referral rate by about 50%. We increased donations, we increased volunteers. We had more PR and media hits than we'd ever had. We ended up with partners, media partners who wanted us on board to talk about things. We wrote articles and blogs and our visits to the outpatient clinic doubled, our surgery census doubled, all the things moved on $30,000 of one aligned message. Different creatives, but the same thing. P 
pediatric bone and joint experts, period. And that campaign influenced stuff at the corporate level that ended up flowing out across the whole nation. So it's important, keep it simple. Align it across all your channels and you will see the biggest lift. I've seen the same thing with health insurance, with um, some of our client accounts that we've done. It has resulted in enormous growth and enormous power and effectiveness of the marketing for very small budgets. So before I go to Q&A, I wanted to just quickly introduce us. We'll be quick. Boss Lady Consulting is our parent brand. We have a sub-brand, Clarity PX, which focuses entirely on healthcare. Boss Lady Consulting focuses on the non-healthcare entities and businesses. And Gathering Place is our social project that we are working to set up in New Mexico to help mentor youth, to help train them. It, they will have internship opportunities underneath our brand and all of that. So um, that is our agency brands. We have five team members that are distributed across the US, one lives in Mexico, just across the San Diego border. Um, we have more than 30 years of experience in marketing in nonprofits to Fortune 100 companies, leadership, communications, PR, fundraising, community engagement, all the things. And our magic spots are really in marketing and growth strategy, in customer and patient experience design and strategy, in brand alignment and activation, both internally and externally. Again, we see over and over again, this is one of the biggest areas of lost opportunity for businesses. And we're experts at content strategy and implementation. We've seen some of our clients grow 42% of revenue, have 35% daily engagement on social media from $1,000. It's crazy. These are a few of the brands that we've served in the last year and a half. We are officially two years old full-time. Um, this isn't all of them, but these are some of our brands and some of the logos that we've helped create. Not all of these, but many. And our focus really is to work with those who wanna make a difference, either for their customer, their communities. They wanna work with us to build a world we all wanna live in. These are some of the places that we have worked and led marketing, communications, PR. We have led the initiatives and strategies for these either on a volunteer or a paid basis. And we're just so grateful for the diverse background that we have. So that is Boss Lady Consulting. If you have any questions, drop them into the chat. We would love to answer your questions. I'm gonna stop the share. If there are any questions, just put it into the pop. If not, feel free to email us. You can reply to the email. We would love to answer your questions and be sure to follow us at, at Boss Lady Consult or at Clarity PX on Instagram. We're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter. We'd love to engage with you and we love helping educate and see businesses successful. So reach out anytime.